You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how to turn an old refrigerator into a vacuum pump. So before we get started, since I do like to teach you guys a little bit of background science on things, let's go ahead and learn how a refrigerator works. Refrigerators and air conditioning units work off of a very simple principle called Edmonton's Law. This law states that pressure and temperature are directly proportional. To better understand this, imagine we had a closed spot with a piston pushing into a block of clay. If we put more stuff into here, we're increasing the total energy of the system. And this can be noted by the piston being pushed down into the clay, since the energy has to come from somewhere. As for pressure and temperature, imagine we have a cluster of particles. Now imagine if I were to get this cluster of particles and put it into a more confined spot. You can imagine, since the particles are closer together, that the temperature is going to be higher in this one. In a refrigerator, this works by a piece called the compressor. This compressor will compress a refrigerant, which in most fridges is a substance called Freon, which molecularly looks like this. Anyways, it'll compress it down into a high density state over here. And then at this point here, the Freon is going to expand, so it'll be a lower pressure over here. What this means is that this compressed spot over here is going to be our hot, and the part where it expands is going to be our cold. This is possible because as those molecules are compressed closer together, the temperature rises and then they use a grid to dissipate that heat. And then when it gets to the expansion point, since the pressure got lowered, the temperature is also going to lower even more, and so thus it'll be quite a bit more cold than it was over here. Now that we know how the refrigerator works, let's talk about one quick disclaimer that you should keep in mind. If you replicate my experiment at home from an old refrigerator that you find, keep in mind that you must get the Freon disposed of properly. Freon directly is not toxic to you in any way besides just displacing oxygen. However, since Freon is a chlorofluorocarbon, or CFC, it can function as a way to erode the ozone layer. Now the ozone layer is very important to the atmosphere because that absorbs the ultraviolet light coming in, or at least a large majority of it. And so if that ozone layer gets degraded by quite a bit, then harmful amounts of ultraviolet light can seep through. Now releasing Freon into the atmosphere can be so bad for the ozone that there is even a $25,000 fine in the US for doing it. And so do not just cut the line and let it leak out yourself, unless you have the proper equipment to store the Freon. However, if like me, you don't have that equipment, then you can bring it to many places that are probably in your local area that'll take the Freon and maybe even pay you for it. Because Freon can actually be a little bit pricey, and so they'll recycle it into more refrigerating systems. Anyways, with all that said, let's go ahead and move on to building this. So here's the compressor and all the wires from when I ripped it out of the refrigerator. You can see that we have three copper pipes connected to this compressor. One of them is just a short thing like this part back here that's going to just be sealed off as a main way to dispose of the Freon. However, the other two pipes are going to take on the parts of the intake and the out. Now in case you're wondering, how this compressor works is that there are pistons inside. Basically, imagine a syringe like the one to power this air horn. And so you have the motor inside that's basically going to be pushing the syringe like this. And so as it goes one way, it's pushing out air, and then as it goes the other way, it's sucking in air. And so then by using check valves, which are pretty much like the air equivalent of diodes, it's able to produce a net vacuum. Okay, I've trimmed up some of the excess wires and reconnected some things. To first test it, I like to use this variac here. This way, if there is any problem with any of the connections I did, it won't be dangerous to me, because I'll be starting it off at around just 5 volts AC. And so, let's go ahead and flip this on, and let's turn up the voltage. And we can see when I have my variac set to around 60 volts that we are getting a slight suction on this tube, and also I can feel air blowing out of this one. So let's go ahead and crank it up the rest of the way. So here's the circuit diagram that I pieced together for it. This portion here is going to be the actual compressor itself. This portion here is the relay that came with the compressor. And then we also have this capacitor out here. This is what the starting capacitor looked like for me. And those wires, and those wires conversely connect up directly to the relays. On older fridges, I have seen the relay be external. However, for mine, this extruding part of the compressor has the relay in it already. Now, it is a great idea for safety to keep a ground connection to the case of this. Okay, so change of plans now. I discovered that I was very terrible at soldering, so my new plan is to attach a tube. And so first I'm going to put some of this Teflon tape around the opening here, because it'll provide a much better seal for when I put the tube on. To also help hold on the tube, I'm going to be using this hose clamp. And so I'm going to slide this over before I put the tube on. And now I can simply slide the tube over the Teflon tape, and then I'm going to put the hose clamp over the part that has the Teflon tape, and then I'm just going to tighten this down. Now with that end all secure, we can focus on the other end of the tube. By using a fitting like this, we should just be able to slide the tube over that lump and it'll create a nice seal. And as you can see, just by pushing the tube over that, it'll stay sturdy in place. Now I should mention that this tube that I'm using is quite thick. I'm not sure how high of a vacuum this thing can pull, but you definitely want it thick enough so that it won't collapse in on itself when it's pulling the vacuum. But anyways, now I'm going to apply some Teflon tape onto the threads of this. And with that Teflon tape added to it, I can secure on this check valve. This way we'll be able to shut off the vacuum by turning the valve here. And now as a final step, I'm going to put on this final adapter so we can attach another tube on the end. 
And just like that, our vacuum pump is complete. Okay, so now I'm going to flip it back on and we'll see what we can pull out of it. And with it flipped, I can't hear any leaks coming out of this end or over here, so we should be very good. And let's try releasing the valve now. Yep, it's sucking quite well. Now this should work fine for most uses that people would use a vacuum chamber, such as molding and stuff like that. However, I'm not super sure on how high of a vacuum this will pull. My main incentive behind this is going to be for future episodes so that I can create x-rays, as well as do other high-voltage plasma vacuum experiments, such as making cathode tubes and such. But I'm not exactly sure how many microns of a vacuum this is pulling. And so although I do not have a vacuum gauge currently, I did order one, and so when that shows up in the mail, I'll measure it, then I'll post that in the description. So now you know an easy and cheap way to get your hands on a vacuum pump. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I apologize that was a little bit shorter and about a not very interesting topic. I've been sick since last Thursday, so I haven't really had much time to put this together per se. But nonetheless, I hope you guys were able to learn something from it. If you'd like to see my weekly science videos, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button so they'll show up in your subscription newsfeed. And if you have any ideas for videos you'd like to see me do in the future, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. That's all for today's episode, so please remember to be safe and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to show you how to make your very own AM radio transmitter.